Welcome to Elimu TV. This is Teacher Faith taking you chemistry from form. And uh, I want to uh, tell our viewers that you can give us your feedback and give us your name and the location where you are watching us from by SMSing us through this number 21450. The number is 21450. Now, welcome to the form for work. And you are still in the first topic about acids, bases, and salts. We have already dealt with acids and bases. We also looked at the, uh, about the solvent, whereby we were looking at the effect of solvent. In a solute. And today we are going to look at hardness of water. Or the water hardness. So that is what we are going to look at today. Now we want to understand what is this hard water, the definition, and uh, how we get hard water. And the first thing we want to say that to understand what is hard water, we would say that this, this is water that does not rather easily with soap. I'm sure at one point you have experienced having hard water and especially when you are doing the washing then you realize that this hard water does not really rather is with the soap that you are using. So um, why do we say that it does not rather is with soap? It's because hard water contains the foreign ions. The calcium ions and the magnesium ions. The calcium ions and the magnesium ions. I believe that once we write it this way, you understand that is the calcium ions and the magnesium ions. So the presence of this uh, calcium ion and the magnesium ions are the ones which normally make our water to be uh, very hard. All not to rather easily with soap. And these calcium and magnesium ions react with soap to form an insoluble substance called scum. The calcium ions and the magnesium ions uh, react with soap to form an insoluble, an insoluble substance. called the scum. So when you are doing your washing, while well you are cleaning, these calcium ions and the magnesium ions, which are normally making our water to be very hard, is the one we are saying that they react with soap to form the insoluble substance, and that substance is what we call a scum. Now, water hardness is divided into two. We have the temporary hardness and the permanent hardness. Divided into two. One, the temporary hardness. And two, the permanent hardness. So those are the two types of hardness. We have the temporary hardness and the other one is the permanent hardness. Now what is the difference between the temporary hardness and the permanent hardness? Now in case of temporary hardness,
contains the calcium ions and the magnesium ions. While in case of the permanent hardness, uh, in case of uh, that one, it contains the uh, we would say that the chloride ions and the sulfate ions. So, when you are dealing with the temporary, then you are having the, the hydrogen carbonate. In fact, we would say that this is the hydrogen carbonate. The hydrogen carbonate. Uh, the hydrogen carbonate here. hydrogen carbonates of the calcium ions and the magnesium. But now, when you are dealing with permanent, you have either magnesium chloride or magnesium sulfate or calcium chloride and calcium sulfate. So you will have the chloride and also the sulfate of the calcium ions and the magnesium ions. So that's how the difference between the permanent and the temporal, temporal hardness. Having understood that, the next thing we need to understand is how to remove, how to remove this water hardness, methods of removing water hardness. Now, in case of removing water hardness, first of all, it is very important for us to understand whether you are having a temporal hardness or a permanent hardness, and you have seen the difference between the temporal and the permanent. Um, one of the methods is voiding. And in case of voiding, this one removes. The temporal, temporal hardness. Now, when you do the boiling and you have said the temporal hardness is the one that normally contains the, uh, the, the, the hydrogen carbonate, and now you boil to remove the temporal hardness. For example, e.g., if you are having calcium hydrogen carbonate, Calcium hydrogen carbonate, we want to see when you boil what happens. You have your calcium hydrogen carbonate. And remember the valency. Therefore, the calcium has a valency of 2, and the other one has a valency of 1. Therefore, the formula will be into bracket, this one 2. Then boiling means you are heating. So when you heat, you will get the following product. Uh, you will get the calcium carbonate, the respective carbonate, plus the CO2 plus the water. And at this level, at form 4 level, then I'm also expecting that you write the state stables. I'm also expecting that you balance your equation. Check whether the calcium are balanced. You have one. The other side, you have one. Move on to hydrogen. You have two. The other side, you are having two. Move on to carbon, you have two. The other side, you're also having two. Oxygen, you have six. The other side, you also have six. So we would say that our equation is already balanced. I hope that you can remember the form two work, whereby we were dealing with balancing of equation, and also checking the valences, and also writing the state tables. Now, calcium, when it is heated, you will be able to get that, and therefore, this is your solid, the calcium carbonate, which is being precipitated. If you're having magnesium hydrogen carbonate, you get the same product, but the difference is that now you get magnesium carbonate plus CO2 plus your water. The formula for hydrogen carbonate, the valency is also 2, so you need a 2 there. The state stables. Oh, 
or even gas. So we would say that now that one is balanced. So that's how you deal with voiding. But now the problem with voiding is that it would be too expensive if, for example, you can imagine you're having a, a large volume. It would be very expensive. So the first one is boiling. Then we move on to another one. The other method is addition of sodium carbonate. I'm sure in form two, when you're dealing with carbon and, its, uh, carbon and its compound, you came across the Solvay process. And the Solvay process, the main purpose was to uh, prepare sodium carbonate. And as you're looking at the uses of sodium carbonate, one of the use was that it normally helps to soften water. So when you're talking of sodium carbonate, then we are saying that it can be used to uh, remove the hardness. And if you are like having calcium hydrogen carbonate, Okay, maybe I would say that this one is for both. For both hardness, temporal and permanent. And let me start with temporal. If you're having calcium hydrogen carbonate, you react with sodium carbonate, then your product will be sodium hydrogen carbonate and calcium carbonate. The product will be sodium hydrogen carbonate and calcium carbonate. Now to check whether your equation is balanced, you have one calcium, this side, the other side you have one. Hydrogen, you have two because of this, so you have two. On the other side, you have one, so you need to put two there. Then carbon, you have two. Uh, you have you have two. You have two carbon plus one three. This side you also have three. Then oxygen, you have six plus three, which is nine. On the other side, six plus three, which is nine. And sodium, you're having 2, 2. So we would say that in this case, our equation is balanced. So uh, you will get this one as your aqueous and that one as your solid, and you have been able now to precipitate out your calcium uh, carbonate. Or if still you use magnesium, to be still the same, hydrogen carbonate, the bracket 2, plus your sodium carbonate, then the product will be uh, sodium, sodium hydrogen carbonate plus now magnesium carbonate, CO3. So to balance this, you need to put a 2 there. So that if you start with magnesium, this side you have 1, the other side you have 1. If you start, continue with hydrogen, you have 2. The other side, you have 2. Uh, carbon, you have 3. The other side, you have 3. Oxygen, you have 6. Pl that plus 3, which is 9. The other side, you have 9. Sodium, you're having 2, 2. So our equation is also balanced. So that is the second one. After boiling, adding sodium carbonate. The third one is addition of uh, sodium hydroxide. Calcium hydroxide, addition of calcium hydroxide because of the uh, valency. And that is what we also call, this one we called it in form two, I remember you called this one lime water. When you are testing the presence of CO2. So, now, when you are having calcium uh, hydroxide and you want to remove temporal hardness, then you will have your calcium hydrogen carbonate. You react with your calcium hydroxide. Remember the valency should be 2 there. 
and therefore the product will be, you get two products, you get calcium carbonate and water. Then you can talk of you can talk of now balancing. You start with calcium, this side you have two, the other side you have one. So you multiply by two here. Then you move on to hydrogen, you have two plus two, four. The other side you are having two. So you need to multiply here by two to be formed. Move on to carbon. This side you have two. The other side you also having two. Then move on to oxygen. This side you have six plus two which is eight. And the other side you are having six plus two which is also eight. And the uh, calcium is okay. So then we would say that our equation is balanced. Otherwise, you can also have, if you are to write this equation, your magnesium, you can also have magnesium hydrogen carbonate uh, reacting with your calcium hydroxide. Then you should be able to get your, your product. But, uh, and also the balancing should be the same. So the difference is that one, you get magnesium, and the other one, you will get, uh, you, you will be able to get uh, the, the other product. Now, the fourth one, the fourth one is when you're adding ammonia, ammonia solution. So, an example, if you have calcium hydrogen carbonate, your calcium hydrogen carbonate reacts with ammonium hydroxide, this is the ammonia solution, you will be able to get ammonium Ammonium carbonate, calcium ammonium carbonate. You need to have into bracket two plus water plus CO2 plus calcium carbonate. Let's see whether our equation is balanced. This one is okay. Uh, that one is okay. Our product is ammonium that plus that. Let's start with calcium. Calcium, you're having one. The other side, you have one. Uh, hydrogen, you have two plus four plus one. So these are uh, uh, two plus five, which is seven. And this side, you have four. Four plus two, six. So that one is not balanced. Then move on to, to carbon. This side, you have two. And this side you have three. So that one is not balanced. The other one is nitrogen. This side you are having one. The other side you have one. Oxygen. This side you have six plus seven. And this side you have, uh, there are so many, six, seven, ten. So that one is not balanced. So what I want you to do for the remaining time is that you will go and balance that equation uh, for calcium and uh, ammonium hydroxide. So just to wind up what we have done, we have looked at water hardness or hardness of water. You say this is the water that does not lather. Lather is red with soap. And we have seen it's divided into two. We have the temporal hardness, and B, we have the permanent. We have seen the difference, this one, is that, uh, okay, before that, the, the ions that are normally making water to be hard, we have the calcium ions and the magnesium ions. Then we have seen the difference between these two is that this one contains the hydrogen carbonate of the respective. And this one contains the chloride and the sulfate ions of the respective. Respective, I mean calcium hydrogen carbonate, magnesium hydrogen carbonate. And for the permanent, calcium sulfate or magnesium sulfate.
Then the methods. Methods of removing. We have started with temporal hardness. So though some we have said they are for both. So the first one is boiling. We have discussed boiling. We have discussed addition of sodium carbonate. Uh, the third one, addition of ammonia, which is ammonium hydroxide. The other one, uh, addition of lime water, which is calcium hydroxide. So basically, that is what we have done. And then the next one now, we will be looking at the methods of removing. We wind up with temporal, and also we discuss uh, for the permanent. Back to my viewers, to be able to get more tips in chemistry, so you have chemistry for and you SMS it to 21126, 21126.